This is Jordan Tao with JT News. Make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe. We've got a good one for you right now. Here we go. Oh, this is only like a little part of how Big Meech got brought down because you would feel like someone like him, so powerful at the top of the family, is very insulated, insulated. And he believed he was. This was part of the reason for starting BMF, you know, for starting the name BMF. He wanted to move into legit music. So that was his escape plan. But it actually ended up hurting him in the long run uh, because it was a name to attach to a lot of things. And they were getting really flashy uh, as this investigation started. So BMF was what created, I think, in 2000, 1999, 2000. But they didn't start advertising it till 2003. Now, Dexter uh, Sosa Hussey, he details kind of how he believes they started this investigation into BMF. It was a Drano investigation that started around 2001, 2002 that started all started with a jail call. A phone call in 2001 from jail with a guy named Harold and Tony Tonica or Tanya Welch. It was a husband and wife. She was upset about like something with her kids. She had just had a kid with Harold and, you know, a lot of information was given to Harold over the phone about, you know, BMF and Meech and everything, you know, just the whole thing. So they had all these phone, you know, jail calls are recorded. You don't want to be speaking on a jail call with all this kind of stuff. So they had like beginnings of an investigation here. Now, Big Meech was brought down with a series of snitches, and it all starts at the bottom. So, if you know BMF, they were like the suppliers in the USA. They were get they had a direct connect to Mexico, and of course, I'm sure that it started in Colombia, made its way to Mexico, and then you know, so you know, there's so many levels before. Uh, a custy gets his little, you know, eight ball, whatever, you know. So it's like, uh, they were getting, yeah, they were moving like thousands of these keys, you know, and these low level dealers were picking up from another guy. Okay. So it all starts with these like low level dealers. Now, this is around 2003, 2004, right here, when this, all of this stuff starts to connect and lead the feds to Meech. Around this time, Meech has billboards up in Atlanta. BMF is yours, all that. Uh, they're pushing Blue Da Vinci as their artist. They're behind a lot of artists. Like, like you know, associated acts like T.I., Jeezy, you know. Meech just loved music and supported music. So he would pay to get these guys' records played. You know, Meech controlled the club scene. Uh, Buckhead in Atlanta it's all buildings now, but it used to be just the the club scene in Atlanta. There's still a lot of clubs around there, but it used to be the club scene, you know? Like, and Meech was buying out these clubs, like, every night. He'd go to a different club, spend, you know, 50 grand, 100 grand. Everybody had, you know, he was making it, you know, he was going to Strokers. He, that That's not in Buckhead, but he was going to, like, Strokers also and all. Uh, uh, pinups, you know, the, these strip clubs, because a lot of records were were broken in the strip clubs back then, you know, as well. So anyways, you know, here's the billboards. Crazy, you know? So, you know, 2 chains and people like that would copy this later on. I mean, everybody wants to be kind of like, like BMF. So anyways, they get led to a guy named Hoskins. Now, first they start following these low-level dealer guys. Um, and this all leads up to a guy named O Dog. Uh, eventually, Omari McCree probably heard of him. Um, but it starts out with these low level dealers that, and his name was Smurf, and Smurf needed work, right? So he was supplied by a guy named Hoskins, and Hoskins got his work from BMF. So, um, Basically, 
Smurf called Hoskins for work, and the, the feds had a line on Hoskins. They had a wiretap. So he calls him for work. You know, is everything everything? Da, 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 da. They go back and forth. They arrange a meeting in Atlanta. Of course, they trail this guy Smurf to Howell Mill Road. Um, he's tar you know, he's tailed by the feds. And they, you know, they get a, a line on Hoskins now. They know what he looks like. Um, they're able to follow where he lives. I think they even met at his apartment building, which is crazy. Okay. Like, so now they're able after a few days to tap Hoskins phone. Hoskins is Smurfs connect, right? So they tap his phone and when they tap Hoskins phone, they're able to intercept the next deal, which is even bigger days later. Now they're trailing Hoskins and they got the wiretaps on them and they hear a big deal is about to happen. They follow him to the spot that his apartment building, when two cars pull up, they see the the inter, you know, the transaction happen and they pick up the guys that just bought some work from Hoskins. As they're getting picked up, they call Hoskins giving them more uh, audio wiretaps <laughs> saying, Hey, we're about to get pulled over, man. He's like, Yo, man, you know, don't call me, man. Like, just, you know, run up, you know, do what you got to do, you know, like, but don't, don't contact me, you know. They're probably worried, like, yo, like, they're probably thinking in their head, like, Yo, is this guy being tail? Like, how are we getting pulled over? The feds have a regular cop car pull them over. They don't run or anything. I mean, they 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 see a weapon in the car. They search the car. They find like a bunch of keys and everything, right? So they play these wiretaps uh, for these guys, and you know they give it give it up, you know, because like they don't really need them to give it up, but they give it up anyways, and uh, they're able to learn that Hoskins learn more about Hoskins. And they pull Hoskins in now because these guys, you know, are able to, you know, cooperate everything with, that they were dealing with Hoskins. He's their connect, blah, blah, blah. So they pull Hoskins in. Hoskins caves. <laughs> Hoskins was supposed to do 15 years, okay? He was pulled in uh, Clayton County trafficking for trafficking. Um. But, you know, he was supposed to get 15 years if you look in all these records, right? 15 years. And I think he's let out. Let's see. So he was, he goes in in 2005 and he's let out in 2009 where he's let out on parole. Okay. But here's the key. This is why he was let out so early. I mean, that's, that's a lot. That's a huge time reduction. He gave up. Oh, dog. We all know O-Dog from the song Air Forces with Jeezy. <laughs> we all know that song. <laughs> and you already know Dog 745's back to back me and O-Dog. All right. So anyways, this is Omari McCree, a.k.a. Master Splinter. Okay. So anyways, they... Uh, with Hoskins, he makes a deal for a reduced sentence, 15 to like four years, and he gives up the connect to BMF. Now, he talks about BMF. He's like, yo, these guys run the city. I'll give up the top guys there. You know, reduce my time. You know, he sings, he sings uh, like, you know, Sinatra, gives him everything. Okay. And then uh, basically. They're on to this guy named O-Dog now. I think he called O-Dog a few times. Eventually, O-Dog says too much on the phone, and they're able to obtain a wire on O-Dog. And I don't know if they met or anything, but it, it was enough for them to get a wiretap on O-Dog. And that's all they cared about. They want to get... They just want to work their way up the chain to the top guys, Okay. Now, BMF was already a target to the feds, so this was working out perfect for them, you know? Uh, this is a happy mistake. Just working up the trail, they eventually get to BMF. Because BMF has these billboards. They're making all this noise in the clubs. 
there's like a lot of violence happening in Buckhead clubs and everything. And BM, there's so many members in BMF at this point. Dexter Hussey says this in his interview. He was upset with Meech because Meech had so many people around. Now, Hussey's been with him since Detroit, since the beginning. 50 Boys, right? 50 Boys was in the 90s, right? 80s and 90s. And now it's early 2000s, and Meech has probably two, 300 people around claiming BMF. You can't control 300 people, man. And you can't be completely insulated. Plus, he's also trying to make things look good when he goes to the club. I mean, they're going and I mean, I know you've seen Jeezy's old uh, DVDs before he got on. I mean, and, and you've seen the Smack DVDs with Blue Da Vinci in them. You know, they had Ferraris. They had Lambos. They had Rolls Royces. Everybody was driving a car that cost at least $150,000. So anyways, um, let's move on with O-Dog, okay? Even in the genius notes, it's so funny. They're like, O-Dog's nickname was uh, was his nickname. Omari McCree is a well-known member of the Black Mafia family co uh, operation. O-Dog is a snitch, partly responsible for bringing down B. I I love these notations because people make them. He served five years of 15-year sentence due to testifying against Big Meech. He actually didn't testify. Uh, he just gave him. A, I don't think he had to testify. He gave him enough information to lead him to the next guy, to the next guy. You know, it's just a big chain of snitches. Okay. Here's the Air Force's video. You can see even um, that's Bull right in the background. He does a lot of interviews. He, he seems like a cool cat. He did his time and came home. Stand. St he stood tall. These videos also were great for the, the feds. They could put names to people and stuff like on the, I think there's a blue Da Vinci on a, on a smack DVD where he, um, I don't know if that's O dog because it, I don't think that's Meech. Meech is a bigger guy. You can't tell cause the quality is so bad in the video, but, uh, this is him right here. So anyways, um, it might, that must be him in the video because that's right when he says 745 back to back me and old dog, <laughs> you know. So anyways, this is Omari. And um, so then basically getting back to this. So the feds are on to old dog. Uh, old dog. This is what happens. So Hoskins calls old dog. They they make they get enough connections. So now they're they're on to old dog. Now a shooting happens at a club called atrium okay this is the inside atrium this is the outside atrium i don't even think atrium exists anymore okay i mean this is a club from like 15 years ago if it exists it's not the same okay it's just the, the name anyways atrium shooting happens O dog for some reason is a suspect okay he gets pulled in him and this guy named jeffrey lee or whatever his name jeffrey something they're partners they're always together Somehow, Big Meech is dragged in after this at pinups and questioned about this atrium shooting because BMF, there's so many members in BMF that, you know, of course, there's witnesses and stuff and people are like, yo, he's a part of BMF because it was so, at this point, it's like 04, 03, 04. BMF is huge, okay? Everybody's talking about BMF. Imagine if there was social media back then. This it, it would the, the, They would have gone down in a year because so many people would have been talking about it. But just the chatter, everybody was like, yo, they spent 50000 a night. You know, these guys spend money, bro. They were making tons of money, spending money and with a lot of money and this. There's hate. There's violence. There's just a lot of stuff, okay? So the, 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 the cops and the feds did not like BMF. There was just too much problems. And that's the problem with having too many people claiming one thing. I mean, this is kind of a problem that um, Lil Dirk's having right now with OTF. I mean, just another guy is getting accused of something today, I heard, you know? So anyways, uh, they, when you get that and then they start building these cases against all these people, you, you start to become a problem, a nuisance to them, and they want to get the top guy. So anyways... Uh, wiretaps revealed on off of O-Dog's phone, right? They get these meeting spots that are named, right? 
the elevator, the gate, Space Mountain, the kitchen. Each one of these spots, they all they have they had tons of houses around of Atlanta. So I guess the elevator was a house with an elevator. The gate was something with a gate. I think it turns out it was a gas station, right? Then Space Mountain. That was pr- I could only imagine that was st- somewhere near somewhere near Stone Mountain, right? Then you got the kitchen, which is a house. Turns out it's a house with a big kitchen. So after Meech is pulled over in pinups and questioned about the atrium shooting, which O Dog is connected to, right? They know this. Um, he gets out, right? I and uh, he gets out a day later. He bails out, and his assistant calls O Dog, and he's like, "Yo, Meech wants to meet you." He wants to meet you at the elevator. Uh, and he's like, why? And he's like, I didn't do anything. He's like, like, nah, he wants to meet you. He's not going to call you on the phone. Like, he's laying low right now. You got to go meet him. So, of course, the feds follow him and get an idea of where the elevator is. Um, and, you know, as time goes on, there's more and more of this questioning about yeah, they, they start. They learn that the the uh, one of the guys that cop from uh, O Dog was arrested. That's the guy that obviously led him to the whole thing uh, that we were just talking about. What's his name again? Uh, Hoskins, right? Hos- they learn that Hoskins was arrested, and he's doing, you know, and he's gonna do, start doing time. And they're like, eh, you know, the atrium shooting. They're like, you know, this guy is just too hot right now. So, and they learn that Hoskins. Uh, that Omari was brought in for the atrium shooting. So they're like, you know what, man? You guys need to chill out. You know, like stop. You know, now Omario didn't stop. Okay, like Meech wanted to. So like, you know, he was still moving around. Think about it. You're moving around in like a Porsche. He's driving a Porsche, right? You're hot. You're hot out here. And, and you're you're driving around in a Porsche, bro. Like. <laughs> Not even anything would blends in. So, anyways, I mean, how, who makes plays in such a high end vehicle? You would want like a Honda or something, right? To like, you know, just blend in a little better. So, anyways, O Dog um, on on the wiretap starts acting shook, like he knows, like, yo, I'm gonna. I feel like I'm gonna be going down for something. You know, he's seeing vans around his house and everything, and he's getting nervous, right? So he calls this guy Jeffrey, like we said, his partner, and he's like, "Yo, man, there's like vans outside my house, man." He's paranoid, right? Talking on the phone, dude. Like, think about it. The wire is out at this point. They're talking about the wire, the show, right? They show you how they like tap people. If you study any criminal history or how they took down, like, the Gaudis and everything, it's all wiretaps, bro. Like, some form of a wiretap. You should not be doing any talking at all, right? Who turned out to be the smart one on, on, on the wire? Marlo, right? Because he stopped talking on the phone, right? He, stay, he, he was doing, like, codes. And eventually, you know, they break these codes. But, like, you, you got to keep switching it up. So anyways, calls up Jeffrey and, you know, they're talking about, oh, you got to move these clothes. The feds aren't dumb. You know, they know the clothes probably work, right? So, uh, you know, they scramble, you know, old dog's driving around his Porsche. Uh, Jeffrey's like, yo, I got a perfect plan. You know, let's keep it at my girl's spot. They move it over there. His girl, find- Jeffrey's girl finds out about it. She's like, you'll get this stuff out of here. Think about it. They're tapping Jeffrey's phone too, so they're hearing this. Yo, I don't want these. I don't want this here anymore. This is dirty. Da da da. So, anyways, Jeffrey's like scrambling over there. He's calling O Dougal. Yo, I gotta get this stuff out of here. We gotta move it somewhere else, right? So Jeffrey goes over there. His girl's tripping. They take the the ten keys that they had moved from Omari and Jeffrey's spot to her house, and they put it in the car. They're driving off. The feds are like, "Ah, right, this is our time." They pull them over. They get the work, and they release Jeffrey and his girlfriend. <laughs> right then and there, you know they're cooperating. It's over, okay? So, uh, but they kept the work, right? Think about it. They owe Meech now three hundred thousand dollars. Omari, 
and Jeffrey owe Meech three hundred thousand dollars because they didn't when 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 Meech Meech didn't want anything. You know, he wanted nothing to do with that stuff. But nobody went and picked up the work from them, right? And nobody was probably going to because they they were hot, right? So it's like, yo, just it's all you know, just call it a loss, you know, like whatever. But still, in their minds, they're like, yo, they're gonna want this money eventually, right? So, anyways, they take the kilos and they keep them. So now, uh, what happens after this? They basically kind of vanish, and eventually. You know, some other things transpire, and they pick up all uh, Amari, aka O Dog, and he's questioned, and he details like you know how we found out about BMF. Well, he said, well, it wasn't BMF in the beginning, 1999. I joined him, and then 2002, I joined what's called BMF, and details the members in the beginning. He gives locations. Like, oh, they're like, what's this spot? The elevator. Oh, it's a house over here. What's the gate? The gate is where J-Bo, you, you've seen J-Bo recently going at Blue Da Vinci and everything. J-Bo was second in command to Meech. He was like the the guy that was insulating Big Meech, right? So J-Bo was the connect at the gate, which turned out to be a Chevron on Roswell Road. I'll show you that right here. Wait, hold on. Let me go back. It turned out to be a Chevron on Roswell Road. J Bo would meet him here. They called it the gate, probably because maybe there's a gate around there. I don't know. They called it the gate, right? Then he details J Bo works for Meech, and Meech is the one who gives the okay to give the keys out and everything. And guess what? They're just they they from there. They got a case, man. You know, they know that Meech is at the top. They know J-Bo's the next guy. They're putting, you know, uh, names and faces together. And, they, and then they start building what you see on a billboard, on, on these bulletin boards. You know, the top guy, the next guy in charge. Wait, let me see if I have that. BMF uh, Fed Board, maybe that'll come up. I forget what you call it. BMF Fed case. Let's see if they have it. I, I see. I see it all the time. But uh, yeah, they, that, that's when they get these bulletin boards where you see like the top guy in command and everything. And you know, th th this was a big blow to uh, to the whole case, man. You know, it's crazy. And th at this point, um, I think it's 04. And then they just keep building the case from there. I I'll detail other snitches that took them down later. But this is one of the main ones. O-Dog. Dude, you know what's funny about this? Just to wrap this up. This is why mobsters, you see in movies, take people out. Because it's like, they're going to flip, man. A lot of you... you People aren't built to do time. That, that's the most dangerous thing is that, like, you got all these people out there and they know too much. And if they get pulled in and they can't do any time, like, a lot of people did do their time. Some people didn't. And they they, they talk for a reduced sentence and they, they can't even, I think he ended up doing a couple of years and then he was let out. When everybody else got, like, 10 years, 15 years, in Big Meech's case, 30 years, you know? It's just a lot, man.